Frank Wilderson's 2013 documentary style video utilizes mock encounter and visual disruption to represent the irreconcilable confrontation between the black subject and the white world, opening space for creative imagining of a world with ontological grounding in black life. This project is situated in the tradition of Afro-pessimism and the lineage of black thought that theorizes the radical incoherence of the black subject in a white culture as the ground from which to destroy the logic and structure of white supremacy and capitalism. The title of the film, Reparations Now, immediately presents an affirmative demand that forces the confrontation of white capitalist economic reason and justice for the black subject. This irreconcilable anti-blackness is acted out in the opening scenes as Wilderson breaks the third wall and repeatedly attempts to tell a story to the imagined viewer. Despite signifying items of suburban middle-class status, low-fat, decaffeinated latte in one hand, the Sunday New York Times in the other, Wilderson is labeled as criminal by the imagined gaze. Written identifiers on screen collapse historical linguistic classifications for the black body. The black and white film image heightens the tension of the encounter, demonstrating how the positive assertion of black life is incompatible with the structure of the white imagination. In a representational shift, the film image then transforms into an all-negative x-ray-like shot, and Wilderson loses the on-screen identifiers. You won't believe this. It's a Sunday. The birds are singing. The sun is shining. Out of the tension comes a disruption of visual codes that presents a new mode of seeing and expression. Here, the black subject demands the destruction of white supremacist logic by refusing to participate. Basquiat's 1988 painting, Riding with Death, uses visible brush strokes, sharp line, and blocked color to model this irreconcilable encounter. The figure is centered in the space, the corporeal form both held and part of the visible stroke marks that build the background. The irreconcilable encounter is marked most prominently in the absence of the white skeletal figure beneath the black subject. Furthermore, the black rider turns away from both skeleton and viewer's gaze. Through a multidimensional outline and overlaying black and brown color, the piece constructs a blackness as reaching forward and back, extending in all directions through motion. Basquiat's use of line and outline, visible stroke, use of crayon in addition to acrylic and canvas, disturbs white classical constructions of form and high art. This re-signification of artistic practice is also evidenced in the quick, motion-filled scratches of black color that cover the white skeleton's outreached hand and open mouth, reclaiming the practice of creative representation and meaning creation from hegemonic, Eurocentric control. In composition, the piece evokes both the sculpture Phyllis Rides Aristotle and Leonardo da Vinci's illustration from Virtue and Envy. The visual subversion of these images signals the death of Western hegemonic control over philosophy and ideology. The visual terrain created by Wilderson and Basquiat acts as a therapeutic disruption of white hegemonic form, offering a chance to see and make the world anew through liberatory representation. From this place of affirmative black subjecthood, the demand becomes the spark for creation, and the skeletal corpse of white supremacy the prison its heart. Industry, its grasping hands, and war, its poisonous voice, is overcome with life. <laughs>